Okay, good afternoon. I just uh, wanted to sneak in a song lyric by Ronnie James Dio, Tell a Little Truth with Many Lies. Now, I'm not big into Dio. I used to be when I was younger, but I've since realized that the music is pretty satanic and evil. But anyway, um, Tell a Little Truth with Many Lies. That's a good analogy, and it kind of sums up a lot of the things that I want to say and what do I mean by that? Well, I don't know how well I can say it. Eh, I'm not even going to try to say things really well. I'm just going to say them. Uh, I was reading this book today, America, A Narrative History, 7th Edition, Volume 2, and I got this book from a used bookstore, and it was cheap. And it kind of tells the history of the United States. So I opened up the book, and I started reading the first chapter and the first chapter starts covering the years just just after the Civil War so the 1860s like 1866 and onward and even the title of the chapter is called Reconstructing the South so I think this is great this is probably going to address a lot of the mud flood type of imagery that we see. Okay, so even in this book that I was reading, on page 661, there was an image that was featured of the ruins of Richmond, Virginia in the spring of 1865, and it shows this image. And you can Google si search this for yourself if you just type ruins of Richmond, Virginia, spring 1865 in the burned district. So I thought, oh, this is great. This book I'm going to read, it's going to talk all about, you know, the Civil War destruction and and all this kind of thing, but it doesn't. The book is very boring. It talks a lot about uh, the history of what was going on in Congress, and it talks a lot about, it goes on in no end to talk about, like, uh, freed slaves and save slave rights and uh, Lincoln and all this kind of stuff, but nowhere does does it ever mention uh, any kind of flooding or mud inundation or any of this type of thing. So it's frustrating. You know, the history books are clearly ignoring and neglecting uh, mud flood and you know the nature of the bombed out mud flooded scenery in the United States at the time. So just once again, the official history is not matching the photographic evidence of what was going on in America around the 1860s. Once again, take a look at Philip Druzhinin's channel and look for Mud Flood, the biggest conspiracy in history, and he does a good job of briefly explaining this concept of Mud Flood. But just if you've never seen it before, here are a few of the most popular examples that seem to be showing up on the internet. So this is in Kazan, Russia on Bowman Street and I don't know the the background story to this but obviously they're excavating at street level perhaps for the sake of sewers or I don't know why they were doing it but you know they dig down 10, uh, 15 feet, maybe even 20 feet, no, 10, 15 feet and clearly the foundations of these homes go way deeper. I mean, this is per perhaps a first story here, and then you even have a basement level. So, what's going on? At no point in any of the history that I've read, whether it was taught in school or a book like the one I mentioned, does it even explain how something like this has happened. Another popular image that seems to show up a lot is, I think this is Paris. I stand to be corrected. But what's going on here? W w what is this foundational level underneath these major buildings. How does that happen? Uh, this defies any explanation that we've ever been given. And I'm not sure I can tie this in very well, but this is uh, the Glasgow under Underground, so you've got the subway system. Um, this is clearly an old building with some atmospheric electricity type of devices on top, but uh, anyway that's a different debate. I guess 
just to give you my sentiment or my emotions I'll put it like this because of mass media being the TV what's on TV what's in the news Hollywood movies the public education system our society has been presented with a certain paradigm of how the world operates and it just isn't in sync with a lot of the old photos we can find from the 1860s which really is the earliest photographic evidence we have anyway I came across this this is George N. Barnard and he took a lot of photos for or during the Civil War I think he was even uh, John Sherman or what's it Sherman Tecumseh's official photographer one of the generals in the war I'm saying his name wrong but anyway I just thought I'd take a look at some of his, his images they're uh, strangely high definition okay the image we just saw was the government sawmills at Chattanooga from 1866 the next image I'm going to click on is ruins of the railroad depot Charleston South Carolina from the photographic views of Sherman's campaign so this is neat here obviously these are ruins from an existing building I'm just going to point out some of the things that caught my attention okay so we have these tall stacks here these look kind of like chimneys and I'll point out that they have like a stucco layer over top of the brick so you see this a lot even on old buildings that survive even today uh, when did this stucco layer go on top of this brick well this is from 1866 so this cement or stucco layer is something they've been doing for a long time okay lots of ruins it's amazing that they built things like this back in 1866 there's a train car that seems to have been wrecked over here there's a wagon wheel perhaps a cannon this looks like a stove inside a fireplace okay the next image you'll be looking at is Nashville from the Capitol from photographic views of Sherman's campaign 1864 once again the definition of these are very high def got some guys over here you can really zoom in on these these show up a lot beautiful old equipment whether these are gas lights or actually even electric lighting I'm not sure of course that would be an anachronism to have electric lighting at this time but who's to say it isn't again lots of cannons sitting around this time period this building I don't know are those shutters or is that boarded up I don't know if these statues are something that's mass produced uh, be very expensive to reproduce something like this today and why don't we produce things like this today okay this is defenses of the Etowa bridge from photographic views of Sherman's campaign zoom in okay rebel works in front of Atlanta Georgia number one so this is well, what date did I say? What date? 1864, 1866? Don't know if this is like a raised foundation, whether this is evidence of mud flood or not. Uh, it's like weaponry or machine gun bullets. Not, not necessarily machine gun, but what happened to this building here? not sure what's going on here but this top of the tree is very straight so I don't know if that's like photo editing or, or what
Okay, so this is Rebel Works in front of Atlanta, Georgia, number four, Sherman's campaign. Everything looks pretty muddy, pretty covered in mud. Destruction of Hood's Ordnance Train from Photographic Views, Sherman's Campaign. This is neat. It's got all these uh, train axles with train wheels all set up in a row. So this is uh, evidence of a pretty high production facility, again, back in the 1860s. So. Obviously back then we still had the technology to either forge or cast or mass produce a lot of heavy equipment and even think that with these train axles you would almost have even have to have even larger size facilities and industrial you know metallurgy equipment to be producing things like this so if these train axles are pretty impressive for 1864 think about the technology they would have had in factories to produce these. And what, what seems kind of like an anomaly or an anachronism is like a big wheel like this. I think you've even got a man here so you can see the size of this wheel. This wheel is about twice as tall as this man. So how is this made? Was this cast? And what kind of larger size heavy equipment would have been used to cast something like this? Again, you've got these large columns. These look, I don't know, poured or machined. I mean, I don't know what these are, but for for whatever reason, rather than demolish demolish them, they've kept these towers. I've seen a previous image like that as well, where they kept kept the towers, and apparently they had high definition photography back back in these times too. That's why I can zoom in. Okay, the next image is City of Atlanta, Georgia, number two, from the Sherman's campaign. This is 1866. Okay, I tried looking this up separately. This looks like it says Atlanta Bank. So I did look up Atlanta Bank. Again, what happened to this building? Does it look like it was uh, burned by fire? Or was it blown up by cannons? And yes, of course, I guess the Civil War did, did take place. What I was interested in is... is um, I was interested in a Civil War battle map. So, like, according to the official history, you know, if we can show all the different battles, then it would make sense that, you know, in all these different parts of the states, there might be destruction in, in major cities. But let's take, for example, like, Chicago, which is all up here, or even, like, into Wisconsin, or, you know, like, New York over here, and Boston, and things like that. Um, you know, where I guess battles didn't really take place. Well, if you go back and do Google image searches of those cities, they still seem just as devastated by bombs. So you can't say that all of this old historical damage was done, you know, by civil war kind of warfare because it clearly affected other cities that are outside the battle zone. So again, what happened? Kind of neat here, you've got, you know, carriages coming through. I guess this is like, these are photos that took a while to capture an image. Okay, now I'm going to look at the ruins of the Pinckney Mansion, Pinckney Mansion, Charleston, South Carolina, Sherman's Campaign. This is from 1865. Again, you've got like brick and then you've got this stucco concrete finish on the outside. I'm not saying there's anything characteristic about that or unique, but you know, obviously this was taking place back in the eighteen sixties they were doing that with buildings. Again, the same type of architecture. It's not like anybody ever gets creative and, and puts a you know totally different type of column on these buildings with like lightning bolts or something else. No, it's always the same columns.
What's interesting is that on these old buildings, they always use the same style of architectural columns. You know, they don't have a lot of artistic creativity that starts using other types of shapes like triangles or squares or diamonds or octagons. It's always these toroidal shapes, or it's always within these certain styles of architectural columns. So usually they're one of these styles, either you know, Greek Doric, Greek Ionic, Greek Corinthian, Roman Tuscan, Roman Doric, Roman Composite. I guess Composite is kind of a combination of these other ones. But why, why are they kind of within these styles? They don't have... I don't know, what if they had like horizontal lines going all up the column? They don't do that. They, they sort of stick to the, to the style. So what do these, what do these symbols mean? Are they precast? Are they pre-made? Pre-made in a man, you know, in a kit. So, give, given the chart I just showed, these are Greek Ionic columns. And that's a very neat word too. Ionic that kind of relates to positively charged ions, like a it's got a charge. It's got a, an electrical type of language to it using these columns. Okay, so the next picture I'm going to look at is ruins in Charleston, South Carolina. I'll look at this one. Okay, so again, you've got this concrete or stucco exterior on the outside of the brick. But what's neat is that even at this time, this is 1865 or 1866, you still have inundated buildings. Right? I'm wondering whether this even happened earlier than the 1860s. How fresh does this look? I guess is what I'm asking. Now when I zoomed in very close on these images, I noticed that there's a bit of an outline around these buildings, and that's not wall. Right? It almost looks like it was cut with scissors, and you have this fake sky in the background. It's like something's not right here. These were cut out. So this brings up a lot of questions as to whether or not this was photoshopped um, historically or recently or you know there's there's a there's a lot of different questions I could be asking you know are these images even composites of buildings or is this like a real existing place this is an even better example you know with inside the scaffolding or whatever you call this you know the there's a different sky texture in the back here. Not only that, but this is a an even better example. You see, you know, this is not part of the building here, so there's like a separate color and so what was the reason to cut out the the sky background? I'm not sure, but there is signs in this one that, that this photo was edited somehow. For what reason and when it happened, I don't know. Even here it looks like it was cut along the top with scissors. Same thing, you can see that there's another sky in the background. So who's going uh, out of the way and to the trouble of editing old photos? That I don't understand. And uh, what's the reason for hiding things? I get, I get angry. I get angry when I see that. I don't know how well I can explain this. But clearly this was a structure that was smashed and broken down. And maybe we see rubble and remnants here. And then it's also filled in with dirt and soil. So what came first? Was this filled with dirt and then it got smashed or got smashed and then it got filled in with dirt? Like, can we piece together a chronology of, of events just by looking at something as simple as this? And even still, this almost looks like a residential home construction site where it's all muddy. But there isn't a lot of um, plants or shrubs or anything growing out of this soil, which is probably fertile enough. So, I don't know. These plants, I mean, they're not that big. Just, just trying to put a time on things. Okay, so I'm just looking at these columns here, and it almost looks like the end of a... of like a dust mop where you screw the end on. Not saying that's what it is, but you've got bricks, like a column of bricks on the inside of this. And here, this is neat, you've got circular.
this is a, a tougher one to figure out for me, and that's bricked up windows. So you clearly have a porthole here, and even these portholes were covered up with stucco, and then there's they're bricked up on the inside as well. So why would you brick up something like that? Almost makes me wonder whether this structure went through a few incarnations, like a few different modifications, right? Because why would you create this detail only to not put a window inside and then to brick it up? It's not making sense, but this isn't the first time I've seen this. I've seen this in Flat Earth, Flat Earth British Subs channel. Lee, he was talking about this in one of his videos before. And I guess uh, further comment, obviously this building is, you know, they're trying to salvage it because, you know, somebody's built a, a frame structure around it. And, yeah, so, I mean, there's maybe some construction effort going on in this this building. And the last thing I wanted to point out is that we do have a, like a gas light or something. Which, I mean, I don't think somebody would just come along in this deserted, destroyed area and install a gas light. So I can only assume that this gas light is from a time before this whole thing was devastated. Okay, so I guess I'll look at this one here. Pass in the Raccoon Range, white side number 1, 1864. I didn't find a whole lot of things here, but we do have guys camping out intents for whatever reason and are they workers are they builders do they build this um, pretty neat that you can have a big heavy train and it's supported by this I'm not I've seen that before and I know that it is possible but doesn't look like a very durable long-term bridge I'm trying to see like if you're going to build a bridge like this you probably have to anchor it into bedrock so I don't know if that's what's being done here with these posts. I'll zoom in. Okay, I guess that's as far as I can zoom in. But these posts are kind of... I don't know, how, how deep do these things go? I'm sure that if a train is going over top, you'd have to anchor these into place somehow. And then you have evidence of mud flood flowing up and down the side of the hill. So I suppose I'm asking some questions as related to the structure of this bridge. You know, what came first? The mud flood or the bridge? Probably the bridge is after, right? And this is the last image here. Lulu Lake, Lookout Mountain from Photographic Views of Sherman's Campaign, 1864. Nothing really caught my attention here. This is actually not the complete collection of, uh, what's it called, Barnard... George Barnard's collection. It's not the complete collection. I just wanted to mention that I have this book at home, Civil War Day by Day, and it's got biographies of all the generals in, involved in the Civil War. I think Martin made a video on this before, basically looking at all the, the generals, and they all graduated from West Point, so whether they were Confederate or Union, uh, they all seem to come from the same same college university which is West Point and they got training so that never really settled with me and it doesn't make any sense as to why uh, both sides of the Civil War would have been educated at the same place there seems to be a tendency with like Civil War like during the Civil War there was a lot of like engineers like I'll read this the Army Corps of Engineers played a significant role in the American Civil War many of the men who would serve in the top leadership of this institution were West Point graduates who rose to military fame and power during the Civil War my point is that there was this engineering kind of component to the leadership in the Civil War and I, I wonder too if they were really maybe involved in like controlled demolition of cities and buildings and ruins and post mud flood kind of stuff which is why you saw a lot of cannons and and I mean just during the Civil War there was no shortage shortage of cannons they just had lots of big cannons for blowing stuff up and you could mount them on trains and you could move them around and this kind of would explain you know what they were doing and, and imagine building something like this